Hello, and welcome to this meeting of the Barbados Genealogy Group for July. Greetings to those of you in, on, on the Zoom, as well as those following our Facebook Live. I hope you are all doing well. This evening, we have with us Nicholas Mears, who will be presenting part two of his very well-received presentation, Researching Barbadian Genealogies Using Online Sources. But before I introduce Nicholas, I want to give you a sneak peek into our latest connections, the newsletter of the Barbados Genealogy Group, which is now available. Just let me share my screen. Okay, there we are. So we have some interesting articles. There's one about the Digital Library of the Caribbean. Uh, there's another article on the Irish, where they're on welcome to migrants. We leave you to determine that. There's an article, is your surname Grant? So this will be of interest to those of you with that surname. There's one on St. Matthew's Anglican Church. And there are some records from the Barbados Department of Archives that you will find interesting. We also provided the links for our more recent uh, genealogy presentations, which you will find on YouTube, as well as to so the Connections Archive, which is on barbadosgen.wordpress.com. So this new newsletter will be sent to you by email. So if you are not on my mailing list and you wish to receive it, please drop me an email. Okay, so I forgot to introduce myself. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Harriet Pierce and I'm the coordinator of the Barbados Genealogy Group, a group which was launched on March 20th of 2014. So we are about seven years old. Our speaker this, this evening, as I said, is Nicholas Mears, who is our information officer. And in fact, he's the person responsible for our Connections magazine, and he did a very good job. Nicholas has been a workshop facilitator for the Runaway Slave Ads Project, which was conducted in 2019 and 2020. And since 2007, he has been conducting genealogical research into his family and persons who reside in that area of Bibby's Lane in St. Michael. Nicholas holds a Bachelor of Science in Political Science and History with upper second class honors from the UWI Hill and an associate degree in arts from the Barbados Community College. Nicholas is passionate about conducting historical research and seeks every opportunity to utilize his education and research skills. But before we hear from Nicholas, who today will be concentrating on familysearch.org, just a few housekeeping matters. We want you to hold your questions until the end of the presentation, and then you can either type your question in the Q&A or use the raise hand feature at the bottom of the screen and we will allow you to speak. If you have any comments that are not questions, any comments or greetings, you may enter those in the chat. Nicholas? All right, good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for taking part in this workshop entitled Tracing Barbadian Genealogies Using Online Resources, Part Two. Um, in this session, I would seek to do a presentation on the website www.familysearch.org. So this is the landing page for the website familysearch.org. This website is a free subscription-based website which is dedicated to preserving historical records for family history and genealogical research. It is owned and operated by Family Search Interna International, 
historically known as the Gene Genealogical Society of Utah, which is in the United States. This was founded in, which was founded in 1894. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is commonly referred to in Barbados as the Mormon Church, is the, pri is the primary be benefactor for family search services. So as I mentioned, this is the landing page for familysearch.org. And if you scroll to the bottom and you click on the link which says about, it provides you with information pertaining to family search and the objectives of this website and um, primarily the objectives of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This website contains most of the church records of Barbados pertaining to baptisms, marriages, and burials. It seems that um, the archives department, they sent most of our records to this company and they were the ones who digitized the records and placed the information on microfilm. And they apparently retain a copy of the information which, which they use to which they're used on this website, familysearch.org. So therefore, thanks to them that we now can stay within the comfort of our own home and we can do our own genealogical research with a click of, of a button. So let me go back to the landing page of familysearch.org. And let's begin by searching family family search for Barbadian records. So in order to search for Barbadian records, you click on the tab which says search. We click on search. We scroll down to records and we click on records. Okay, this brings us to this part of the page. And we see on the right, there is a section entitled research by location. So we want to specifically narrow down our research to Barbados. We don't want to go and type in, let's say an ancestor's name, for example, John in terms of in, in first name and Brown and you and you come up with, with a John Brown from the USA and also from England and Canada and all, and all over the world. We just want to narrow down the research to Barbados. So in order to do that, we go to the section of the page, which is entitled research by location, which is located on the right hand side. And we click on the Caribbean region. You can click on the island of Cuba. And once you click on, on that section, there. It, it provides you with a list of Caribbean countries. And we see here that 29 locations are identified. And in that list, we see Barbados. So therefore we go and we click on Barbados. And as it states at the top, Barbados, welcome to our Barbados research page. We've brought together tools to, to help you with your research in Barbados. Okay, so then um, let us just scroll down. And there is a section entitled filter by collection. And let's click on show all seven. And these here under title, we see Barbados baptism 1739 to 1891. And we see a list of collections. Now these are the databases from which the information would be extracted from. So we see that um, there are seven that are showcased. And we see under records, it lists the number of records which are contained within these databases. So for the first one, we see that there are 451,676. And that the last time that it was updated was the 29th of January, 2020. So this is some helpful information. And what is also important is that you see the, the time period which these databases cover. So we see that they mainly cover up to the 1880s. The first one goes up to 1891. So if you are researching an ancestor and they were born, let's say in 1905, you will not be able to go and enter the information in this section and be able to find that person that you are looking for. For we see that the databases, they go up to the 1880s, 18. 90s, specifically 1891. 
So if the person was born or they were buried or they were married before 1891, you can just come on this page and you will be able to search for an ancestor. So let's search for someone. So let's scroll back up and under deceased ancestors information, you can enter the person's first name and last name. So for this presentation, I will enter the name Samuel Jackman and for last name Prescott. And if that name rings a bell, you should know that the, um, that person is one of Barbados national heroes. He is he is memorialized on our $20 bill, Samuel Jackman Prescott. So you can enter the person's name, Samuel Jackman in first name and last name, you can enter Prescott. And you also have the option of entering the birthplace. When for family search in terms of birthplace, it is mainly restricted to parish. So therefore you can't enter the district and be able to find that information so you can't enter for example um black rock under birthplace and find the information it must be the parish so therefore for birthplace you can enter the parish of saint michael saint michael and we can also see that in terms of birth year you can do a range so therefore um you can enter let's say between 1830 or 1835 um, if you want to narrow down the research so for right now, I'm just going to leave it as, as the person's first name and last name and their birthplace. And I'm gonna click on search. And we see a list of results they're presented. At the top under search results from historical records, um, there are 79 records that came up for Samuel Jackman Prescott. Okay, so you have the option of scrolling through and you can see the relations that are on the right hand side. We see spouse, Catherine, Catherine Rose Prescott and child George Cruden. So you can click on Samuel Jackman Prescott and let's see the information which comes up for the first record, Samuel Jackman Prescott. Okay, well, it provides on the right hand side, we see that there is a picture of the original document which is presented and you are able to go and click on the original document and the information that is listed should be presented in the original format. So let's scroll. So therefore, right here we see that we have a digital copy of the actual record itself. So if you scroll in, if you go to the top, we see that this is a record from the St. Mary's Chapel, or as we commonly know it as St. Mary's Anglican Church. So you can scroll in and you can scroll through and look for Samuel Jackman Prescott. I think this is the baptism records for his child, George Cruden. And as we can see here on the 28th of February, the year is listed at the top of the record. If we scroll back up, it says 1838. So we have George Cruden who was baptized on the 28th of February, 1838. He is the son of Samuel Jackman and Catherine Rose Prescott and their place of abode was Broad Street, Broad Street, Bridgetown, St. Michael. So that is an example of a record that you can extract from family search. So let me go back and let me um, take out the birthplace and let me do another search. Go down and click update record. Okay, so the first record we see that um, there's a marriage that occurred the 15th of February, 1836 and the spouse name is Catherine Rose Cruden. And this allows you to click, you can click on the name Samuel Jackman Prescott, or you can go to the right and you can click on the camera icon, which I will do. I will click on the camera icon. 
And this takes us to a picture of the original record. And this allows us to scroll in and we can view the original record. So we see here Samuel Jackman Prescott of this parish. Well, you have to scroll to the top to see that this parish is referring to the parish of St. Michael and that the year is 1836. So if we scroll back down, Samuel Jackman Prescott of this parish and Catherine Rose Cruden of this parish were married in this church by license with consent this the 15th day of February in the year 1836 by me, W. Garnett Rector, who was the rector of the church W. Garnett, and we see is between Samuel Jackman Prescott and Catherine Rose Cruden in the presence of Alexander Cruden and John William Reed. And based on the surnames, we can see that most likely Alex Alexander Cruden is related most likely to Catherine Rose Cruden. This could be probably a brother, a cousin, or probably a um, father. Is it's not specified right here? And we see that the year of this record was 1836. From the year 18, eight, from the 1850s, I think specifically the year 1855. More detailed information is provided in the marriage record. So therefore, you see um, the names of the the bride and the the bride and the groom's father and the occupation listed on those records but prior to the 1850s it just it does not contain the information is is only after the 1850s that you would see the father's names listed and their occupation as well and and also the bride and the groom's uh, place of abode so this is an example of the records that you can obtain from familysearch.org. Let me just go back to the records that are presented for Samuel Jackman Prescott. And if you go to the second record, um, Family Search, they provide links to, to other websites as well. So if I go on the right and we click on the camera icon, it says image is at a partner's site. So if I click on that icon, this takes us to a partner website, which is find a grave. And we see here that it provides information pertaining to the burial of Samuel Jackman Prescott. And we also have a picture of his um, grave site. So we can go and we can view the grave site. And we can also see the information which is listed if you scroll down on this, on this website. And we see sacred to the memory of Samuel Jackman Prescott who died at his resident Belfield on the 26th of September in the year 1871 in the midst of his bereaved family. So this is just an example of the information that you can get from familysearch.org. Family and we see that they partner with other web other websites to provide you with more detailed information. So I will now go back to the website familysearch.org. Okay, so you can, so you're able to scroll through and we are able to see other information pertaining to Samuel Jackman Prescott. So you can scrutinize to see if this is the person that you're looking for or if it's someone else. We can, we can see that, um, the names of children, they are presented of Samuel Jackman Prescott with his wife, Catherine Rose Prescott. We see there's George Cruden, as we saw in the first example. There's Lydia, there are various names which are provided. So this is a helpful tool that you can use in your family search. Now, let me go back. So I must inform you that in terms of being able to search for records in terms of just typing in the person's name, like how I did, like how I entered the first name Samuel Jackman Prescott and the last name Samuel Jackman for the first name and last name as Prescott. This is only primarily available to the Anglican church records. So in terms of searching these records, you would mainly just get, or you would only get Anglican church records. And the Anglican church, also known as, as the Church of England, is the dominant church or was the was the dominant church in Barbados. So there's also records 
which are linked to non-Anglican church, and that is what I will now take you to. So if you want to search for persons who might not have been Anglican or who were not baptized or, mar or married or buried in an Anglican church, you can go to, back to the top, click on search, scroll down to catalog. And in the box which says place, you type Barbados, click the search button, and the list of catalogs are provided. We scroll down to the section which says Barbados Church Records, and they have 14 listed, and you click on, on the number 14, and we see a list of catalogs which are provided. And we see on the second one, there's the Barbados Parochial Register Series A from 1637 to 1850 Anglican. And underneath that, we see Barbados Parochial Registers Series A, 1660 to 1887, other denominations. And this is the catalog that you will click in order to obtain information pertaining to persons who were either um, buried or married or baptized in a church which was not uh, which was not the Anglican church. So we click on this record or this catalog and we scroll down and we see that the first section that you come to under notes, it provides you with the indexes, the baptism index A to, a to M, which goes up to which is from early to, to 1886. And then there's baptism index M to Z up to 1887. So what you do, you go to the camera icon that's located on the right-hand side of the screen. You click on that and it takes you to the indexes of the other church of the other churches. So let's view one of these index. You can click on one of the images and you can hit the plus icon that's on the left hand side and that scrolls in and it brings the information up so that you can see. And we see a list of names provided and the churches and the churches. So the first one we see that the person Rosaline Morin, the Roman Catholic Church and the volumes they're listed as C and then there's the page number which is provided. So with the non-Anglican church, they are the indexes are listed according to letters from A, I think, up to um, G. While with the Anglican church records, they're listed by numbers. So if we want to search, let's say for um, Frederick Morris, the, the second person, we go to um, volume C. And we, and we look for the page number 801. So let's do that. So let's look for Frederick Morris. We go back, we click the back button and we scroll down. And as you see here, they're listed um, baptism, marriage and burials, 1768 to 1886, volume A. And that covers the Moravian and Roman Catholic church. And then the second one covers the marriages from 1811 to 1886. This is volume B. The Wesleyan, the Moravian, the J Jewish, and the Catholic. So therefore, we see a number of um, churches and also the Jewish um, religion being represented here in terms of the records which are available. So we can see that the baptism, Wesleyan, there's volume C. So you go and you search for the volume, as I say, is, is listed by letters. So there's A, there's B, there's C, right down to G and A. There's H right up to K. And, and I must also mention that it also contains information to persons who were, who, um, were related to persons who served as soldiers who were, who were stationed at the garrison. So let's look at the last record. Let's click on the camera icon for the garrison, the baptism, marriages, and burials, 1843 to 1878, volumes 
H to K, the garrison, and let's click on the camera icon that's on the right-hand side. And let's see the information which would be provided. Okay, let's click on an image and click on the plus button that's on the left-hand side, and we see the information is being brought forth. Yeah, but I must warn you with some of these records for the non-Anglican, the non-Anglican records, there are there are mixed up, they're jumbled up. So sometimes you really have to scroll through to find information on them, which is quite challenging at times. Okay. And also um, this provides you with a number of tools. So if you look on the right hand side which says tools, you have the option of clicking on tools and you can flip flip the books. Yes. You also have the option of inverting it. So if you find the white is too overpowering, you can click on invert, you can click on tools, go to invert and what was white becomes black and what was black becomes white. So if this is easier on the eyes, you have that option. Whichever um, is, comf is comfortable for you. So we see here, let's examine this record, baptisms of children of officers, now commissioned, now commissioned officers and soldiers in the garrison of St. Anne's in the island of Barbados for the year 1846. And we see the date of the child's birth is listed. Well, some have numbers, but the third one, it says the 29th of January, 1846. Place and date of baptism, St. Paul's Chapel. That's for the third one. The child's Christian name is Anne. The parent's name we see is James and Sarah Anne. And their surname is... Pontin, if I have that right, Pontin, rank of the father. He is a gunman and driver of the Royal Artillery. And it provides, at last, the name of the chaplain. But you're mainly um, concentrating on the first set of records. So therefore we see the information which is provided. So you can see, you have, you have the option of seeing the original rec um, records which are listed. So that's for persons who were stationed at the garrison, who were ser serving as soldiers at the garrison. And you also have the option of searching persons who were of the Roman Catholic faith, who were of the Moravian church, who were of the Wesleyan church, and who were of the Jewish faith as well. So this is the section that you come to, to obtain the information pertaining to persons who were born, who were baptized or married or buried under not Anglican, church records. So let us go back to the Anglican church. Let's go back to search. We go down to catalog. We type in the place name, which is Barbados. We click search, the search button. And we click, as I said, Barbados Church Records, the one that um, has 14 next to it, and you click on that. And we see that there are other registers listed as well. If you recall earlier, I said that for the first section, in terms of once you click on location, you, you um, select the country of Barbados, you are able to enter the person's name, but is only restricted to to the year up to the 1880s, 1890s. As we can see here for the Barbados Parochial Registers Series B, they go up to 1912. So this 1849 to 1912. And if you scroll down, you can go to the Parish Registers Transcript 1900 to 1931. So let's click on the parish registers transcript 1900 to, to 1931. Yes, and once you scroll down, you are able to see um, the, the catalogs which are listed. We have registers of births between 19, the first one 1900 to 1903. Once we click on the camera icon, it provides you with the image for that 
for that catalog. And let's click on an image and let's scroll in and see the, to see the information which is provided. Yes, so we have here the forms of registers of births. This, is, this was information which was mainly held by the registration department. But as we can see here, it is not detailed. We have the date when born, but we don't have the name of the person that was born. So we just have the um, date when born, we have the sex, we have the name and surname of father, name and maiden name of mother, their place of abode, the rank and profession of the father, and other details which is provided. But unfortunately, if you're going to scroll through these records, you will not be able to find, well, most of them, as you can see from this page, they don't have the name of the person who was born listed. It just have the parent's name, unfortunately. And unfortunately, these inf this information is not indexed. So you have to scroll through page by page. And if you look to the, uh, uh, the top, left-hand side of the screen, you see that it contains 200, well, 2,585 images to scroll through, unfortunately. So if, so this is unfortunately looking for, um, is like looking for a needle in a haystack. But if we go back to the list of records provided, that is, we see there's registers of births, but we also have registers of baptisms listed below. I want to click on the camera icon pertaining to re registers of baptisms. Let's click on one. Let's, let's look at one of these records. Let's scroll in and see the information which is provided. Ah, so we see that this one is more detailed. It says baptism solemnized in St. Stephen's Church in the parish of St. Michael in the island of Barbados in the year 1900. And we have the date when baptized, um, the date when born, the child's Christian name, um, the parent's name. Well, this just lists um, the name of the mother, the mother's name and their place of abode. So this is where you can go to search for the baptism records of persons who were born after the year 18, after the decade 18, 1880s, 1890s. You can scroll through and you can look for the, the person that you are desirous of searching for. But unfortunately, these, these records are not in debt. So therefore it could be like looking for a needle in a haystack. But if you know the year and the date of birth that might pro you might be able to search for the person via this method. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the catalogs. So we see that it goes all the way up to, if you look at the bottom, the registers of burials up to 1831. So you can use this, but unfortunately it's not in there. So you have to do the tedious um, task of, of scrolling through page by page. But as we can see here, um, some of the information overlap. If you look at series B, 1849 to 1912, this goes over to the section, which is 1900 to 1931. So let's say if you have an ancestor that was born in the year 1905, you can click on series, series B. And we can go to the baptism index. Um, if you have, yes, unfortunately, yes, it doesn't go up to 1805. Some of the information is, is uh, missing. So it's sometimes luck and chance. Ah. So we see here we have baptism in depth. Let's say N to Y, 1885 to 1903. We can click on the camera icon and that will take you to the image for that index. And let's go to, let's type in page 300 and let's scroll, scroll through, scroll in. 
So we come to the W's of the year 1889. So you have to flip through by typing next to image, you have to type um, a page number, which is up to, as um, it says here, th 381. So it's a lot of flipping through that you have to do in order to find the person that you are looking for. 1885, you have to flip, you can turn, turn the pages, just like if you were at uh, the archives and you were going through the indexes, this is what you have to do. You have to scroll through and you have, and once you come across the person that you are looking for, and these indexes, they are arranged according to the year first, they're, and then they're sorted according to the surname alphabetically, and then they're sorted according to the district. And usually it is the district of St. Michael, the parish of St. Michael, which is listed first, and it goes on. And then next to the next to the district, which is sometimes represented by a letter. So P here stands for the parish of St. Philip. And then we have the index, the volume. You make a note of the volume. Volume, let's say for the first person, Alice Rice, you make a note of the volume, which is volume 94, and the page number is two is 248. So let's make a note of that. So the volume number is 80 is 94. So you go back. And then you scroll down and it has the volumes listed. So it says here, we want to find volume 94. You scroll down until you find baptism volume that the V represents volume, volume 94. And then you click on the camera icon. And you, and as I said, you make a note of the page. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you just can't go and click, let's say the um, page number 804, 804, and the number is presented. You have to go and you have to zoom in on a page. And you see the numbers that, that are listed in the top left-hand corner or the top right-hand corner. These are the page numbers which are listed, which you have to scroll through. So you have to find the number 804 at the top left-hand or the top right-hand corner of the page to, to be able to find, to find the ancestor that you are looking for. If I go back, if I type in a page, it so it's 956, scroll back, 858, and yes, this is the tedious task that you have to go through, but it's worth it in the end. Uh, 8, 801, and then you can scroll, I think the number was 804. Pardon? Okay. 804. So this is the tedious task with which you have you have to go through, unfortunately. So I would leave that for you. So now you know the resources that you have on hand. So now, since time is getting away, I will now skip to searching for persons who traveled overseas because we know that some of our ancestors they migrated overseas. And the first country that I would look at is the country of Panama. We know that be between the year 1904 and 1914, many of our ancestors migrated to Panama to assist in the construction of the Panama Canal. It, it is estimated that out of a population of then 180,000, that between 45 to 60,000 Barbadians migrated to, Pan to Panama. That's like approximately a quarter or third of the, of the, of the population that migrated. So the first country that I'm going to research is the Panama. So let's go and click on search and click on records. And on the right hand side under the section find a collection. In collections title, I'm going to enter United States, United States, comma. 
Panama, Panama Canal Zone Employee Records and Sailing List, 1905 to 1937. And at, and at this time, the Panama Canal Zone was, was in control by the United States. So let's click on that. And let's type in an, a person's name. We can type in, for this example, I would use the name Oliver Blackman. First name Oliver, last name Blackman. And on the birthplace, I'm going to put, enter the name Barbados. And we're going to click on search. And we see one record is presented and we can go and click on the camera icon. Aha, uh -huh. and we have a record pertaining to Oliver Blackman. So if we scroll in, we see record information per pertaining to, to him. And look, thankfully we have pictures. So some of these records provide pictures of, of our ancestors. So this is a picture of, of Oliver Blackman. And if we scroll up, we can see the record which we have pertaining to Oliver Blackman. Uh, his occupation was a compositor and that he was working for 24 cents per hour. And that the year of this record at the top right hand corner, it says October the 15th, 1918. So this was after the construction of the Panama Canal. And we see that his employment was from September the 16th, 1918 in the position as a compositor. Yeah, that his citizen was Bridgetown, that his date of birth was September the 1st, 1881, and that his place of birth was Barbados, and that he arrived on the Isthmus, which was Panama, on June the 15th, 1908. So it's possible that he was, he was part of the construction of the Panama Canal, and then after its construction, he found another job which as listed here is a compositor. So this is an example of the records that you can get pertaining to persons who travel to Panama to be involved in the construction of the Panama Canal. Yes, I did state that between 45 to 60,000 Barbadians migrated, but don't get too excited from what I have seen pertaining to this record, which has images of persons who migrated to Panama. There's only 77 which are listed in this databases. So if you're lucky, you might be able to find an ancestor in this database. Okay. And if I go back, let's go back. So that is an example of persons that you can find under the collection entitled United States Panama Canal Zone Employment Records and Sailing List 1907 to 1937. But I'm going to go back to the catalog or to the research space under find a collection. I'm going to type in again, United States, United States, comma, Panama. And I'm going to select the second database, which is indexed to the Gorgas Hospital Mortuary Registers. And I'm going to type in the name George P and under um, last name, I'm gonna type nurse. And for birthplace, of course you put Barbados. If you know of an ancestor that migrated straight from here to a country and you click on search. Okay, let me take off the T. Oh yeah, sometimes you have to leave out Barbados in terms of this specific record, unfortunately. Yeah, George T. Nurse, and let's click on the icon listed on the right-hand side. Uh, 
and you see information is provided. There is a George T. Nurse, um, sex male, age 83. Burial grave number 10. Death date was the 15th of January, 18, sorry, 1984. Death place, the Gorgas Hospital, Panama City, Panama race. He was black and nationality, as we see here, Barbadian. So that is an example of someone who probably stayed in Panama, in Panama after the construction of the Panama Canal. And we saw that they lived to the right age, old age of 93, and that the date of burial, the date of death, sorry, was the 50th of January, 18, sorry, 1984. So that is an example of the information that you can get pertaining to Panama. But, it's not only Panama that her ancestors migrated to, there are other locations as well. So I will click on search, click on records, and we can also, um, click, you can enter um, person's first name and last name and birthplace, and their birthplace, which would be Barbados, hopefully, and you can enter a country. So for example, I'm gonna enter the name Edward, last name Cozier. Cozier, birthplace Barbados. And let's enter country um, Brazil. Let's click on search. Okay, and you, and Edward Lloyd Cozier is listed here and we see information that's provided. Birth the 21st of January of June, 1912, Barbados, British West Indies, immigration 1958 to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Father is John Lloyd Cozier and mother is Gwen Cozier. And we can also, we see that there's a camera icon that's on the right hand side. You can click on the camera icon and let's see the information which is provided. Aha, uh -huh. we also have pictures as well. So you can see a visual represent a visual representation of your ancestor as well. And if my knowledge serves me right, um, Brazil, um, they speak Portuguese. So therefore the information I assume is in Portuguese or it might be Spanish, I'm not too sure, but I know for sure that the Brazil, they speak Portuguese. And we see that and the name is presented, his birthplace, birthplace and the name of his parents and his, prof his profession is listed as a journalist. And it seems like he, he um, also um, resided in Trinidad. So if you are good in Portuguese or Spanish, you might be able to, to decipher the information which is presented here. So we see here on the right is a picture of Edward Cozier. So this is an example of the information that you can get pertaining to your ancestors who might have stayed in Barbados or, or those who might have migrated to Panama or to Brazil. Lastly, I'm gonna look um, at persons who migrated to the U United States. So let's go back to search. Let's click on records. And under find a collection, you can enter collections title, New York. New York. I'm gonna enter passenger list. Passenger list. And I'm gonna select the first one. So this is New York passenger arrival list, Ellis Island from 1892 to 1924. And this allows you to search for persons who migrated to the U United States through New York, specifically through Ellis Island. So let's type in, let's say an ancestor's name, first name, John, last name, Clark. Birthplace, you can enter Barbados. And let's scroll down and click the search button. Okay, and we have a list of persons who are listed. 
and you can go on the right and you can click on the camera icon to reveal more detailed information pertaining to the person who was traveling to New York. So we see this provides detailed information. Sometimes it's a hit, a hit and miss. Let me go back because that's not the one that I'm looking for. Let me click on the second, second record. Let me click on the camera icon. And we see as we scroll in, we see detailed information which is provided. If you remember from the first presentation, which I did, um, we also saw that um, we checked the website ellisisland.org. And the same information which is provided um, there is also provided here. So this um, provides a link to the partner website and the information which is contained through that partner website. So if you scroll in, you see the person um, Name, name and full their age. So let's look at the first person. I think that's, that's Helena Aline. She's 40 years of age, female. She's married, occupation, dressmaker, able to read, yes, able to write, yes. Nationality, they have Great Britain race. She's African, referring to, well, she's black. Last permanent resident was USA, but we can see for the person below, their last permanent resident was Barbados. And we see um, the final destination is provided for the first person, it's Orange, New Jersey. And for the second person is Brooklyn. If they have a ticket and such stuff, so detailed information is provided. But if you scroll through, we see um, under 16, it says whether going to a relative or friend, and if so, what relative or friend and, and his name and complete address. So therefore we see detailed information is provided. So for the second person that's listed, we see that they're going to their father and their father's name is listed as um, a Mr. James H. Atwell. And it also provides um, their place of about 29 Rockwell Place, Brooklyn. So therefore, as we see, it provides um, detailed information to persons who were migrating. So we see that this person, their father's name is listed and that could be helpful when doing ge um, ge genealogical research. So this, the second, per the second record which is listed, their father's um, name is James Atwell and this person's name is listed as Willis Atwell. So this is an example of, of records that you can gain through familysearch.org. So finally, I would look at one more. One more. We click on search, we click on records. And there's also um, sensor, census records that you can also scroll through so let's look at um new york new york there's click on census state census and we can click well birthplace barbados and we can enter a person's name i'm, I'm just going to enter the last name let's say um brown I click on search. Okay, and we see that there's information which is provided pertaining to Thomas Brown. His birth was 1884. Uh, he was born in Barbados and we see the, re the relatives listed. So let's go and click on the view, view records that's on the right hand side. Let's see the information which is provided. So the census records which are provided. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this does not take you to, let me see, an image of the record itself, which could be quite detailed. 
but we see census name Thomas Brown Mill. He's 21 years of age in the year 1905, uh, place that he was residing in Manhattan on the address that's listed. His race, he's um, W white, he's um, border. He's a border, um, birth year was 1884, birthplace was Barbados. So let me scroll back. Let me click on a later census record. Let's go to search records. Find the collection, collections title, New York. New York census. Let's go to the year 1925. Birthplace Barbados. Remember to type in the birthplace Barbados because you don't want to find a whole listing of persons that you are not interested in searching for. You click on search. Zero collections listed. Let's look for, let's say, Clark, birthplace, Barbados. And click on search. Well, unfortunately, no information has been provided, so probably you have to take out Barbados. Okay. So that is just one collection that you can search, but there are so many collections that are listed. So finally, this is going to be my last collection that I'm going to search. Many of some of our ancestors, they went and fought in the First and Second World War. So what you need to do under find a collection, you can type United Kingdom. United Kingdom, and we see here United Kingdom, there's their records for, for militia service records, 1806 to 1915, let's select that. Birthplace, let's select Barbados. Let's type in just a random surname. I'm, I'm gonna try Brown again. Or let me look under Brathwick. This will be helpful if you have a ancestor's name. Yeah, so unfortunately right now I can't um, think of, of a name at the top of my head. I, um, you can type in the name Barbados and if you know of someone by um, their name, let me try um, Yard Collection. Yeah, I'm unable to find a name, but this is just to show you the various options that you have, the various collections that you can search to find Barbadians who traveled overseas or Barbadians who were born and raised in Barbados. So here is where I will end my presentation. So I hope that this was helpful to those persons who participated in this workshop, in this presentation. So you can go and you can search the Anglican Church records, the non Anglican Church records. You can search for persons who migrated overseas and persons who served in the First and Second World War, or who migrated to the United States. So this is where I will end my pre um, presentation. So good luck in your search for your ancestors. Thanks very much. Again, for a very informative presentation. Uh, we will now take any questions. I see there are already some questions in the chat. Right, there's someone who's asking about um, if you have any information for Barbadians who travel to Suriname between 1870 and 1880. 
Have you talked to um, unfortunately, I have not um, searched for persons in Suriname. No, I haven't. But there's a possibility that um, such records and such information might exist. Um, if, if I go back to family search, let's see if we will be able, let's go to search records. Well, as I said, you might have to click on um, South America and you might have to scroll through and see if you find Suriname, uh, Suriname and you might be able to find, um, you might be able to enter the first name and the last name of the person and enter the birthplace of the person and hopefully, and hopefully that might provide information. Yes. I can add to that just a little. The at the bottom of the department of archives, there are some registers called the district A registers. Some people call them the Panama registers because most of the persons don't even know in Panama. But compared to the immigration department that we know now, persons living in Barbados had to register at district A. And this includes not only the persons who went to Panama, but also like other countries. So this is some things we can have a look for your ancestor who went to Suriname. Okay. Uh, this is one from Patrick Nicholson. Do you have uh, any registry of persons migrating to Diana or British Diana? Hi. There is a, right, there is a list of um, Guyanese colonists. Uh, if you search online, I am not remembering the exact URL now, but if you check online for British Guyanese colonists, you will see persons who travel from Barbados to, to Guyana. This was compiled by a lady who has some connections to Guyana. So that is the first place I usually look when I'm thinking of persons who went to, to Guyana. Again, the district A registers will also be another source. This is um, Denzel on Facebook, who wants to know what are the earliest records which are recorded. And if, if, I, if I can answer this, the earliest record is 1637, earliest surviving record at the Barbados Archive is 1637. I think it is an uh, entry for Christ Church. But remember, um, over the years, there would have been some records being lost. At different times, um, churches will start to keep records in detail and so on. But the earliest surviving record is 1637. And those records, family search, actually has the Barbados records from 1637 to 1930. Here's an interesting one. Someone wants to know how you correct an incorrect entry made in a family tree. <laughs> I, I, I assume if it is your family tree, and you find the correct information, you will make the necessary edit. If it is someone else's family tree, I will suggest that you send the particular information to that person and um, lift the corroborating evidence to let them know that um, there seems to be an error. There's Robert Luther Johnson, who is asking if there's any information on Bajans leaving Panama to go to Cuba. Have you seen any of those records online? You've seen persons leaving Panama to go to the USA. In your search, Nicholas, have you come across any of them going to Cuba? Okay. From the Canal Zone? Well, admittedly, I have not done research um, in that regard to persons who um, left Bajans who left Panama and went to Cuba or 
um, the United States, but you might be able to search on ellisisland.org um, Ellis if I have the, um, the um, website um, correct and search there. I am not too sure if records were kept of persons who migrated from Panama to Cuba. I'm not too sure about that. But you can use family search and use the methods that I um, describe and you can see if you can come across any information. But do take in mind that um, Panama was under the control of the United States. So you might have to search under United States as opposed to Panama itself. Or Mr. Who wrote a book? Um, Tell my mother you're going to Cuba. I think that's the correct title. So she may be an interesting person to ask that ask that question. Um, I I myself asked her, and perhaps you can send me an email, and I will see if and put you in contact with her. I'm going to put my email address in the chat. Right, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. Okay, there's another one. Are there any records of people migrating to Barbados from Brazil? Again, um, I, Nicholas, I'm not sure if you have any information on this. I don't. But again, the local expert for migration to, to and from the Guyana, as well as Brazil, is Dr. Frederick Allen, uh, who is also a member of this group. So perhaps he, he may be able to, to say something on that. Actually, a few years ago, we did have a presentation where he looked at Barbadians who went to um, not only Brazil, but the South, South and Central America, a joint presentation with Elaine Hosha, who was a lecturer at UE at the time. Do you have anything to add to that? Okay. Also, um, depending on the year of travel, he might be able to check the um, ship manifest records, which is also stored on ellisisland.org, if I have the um, website correct. Um, yeah, because that didn't only capture persons who went to the United States, but persons who traveled on ships, because they were persons who might have come up from from Brazil stopping Bar in Barbados and the ship continued on to the United States and, and that person might have been recorded on that record. So that is, an, that is a website that the person can consult to search for um, ancestors who might have migrated from, from Brazil to Barbados. Thanks. Thank you, Nicholas. We have a question from Miranda Greenwich. She said she found a great grand uncle who's registered on several baptism records as an informant. I doubt he was related to the child or parents. Is it likely that he volunteered to be an informant? Yeah, most most likely the person volunteered as as an informant. That you said that. He was related, you doubt that he was related. It is a possibility. I'm not too sure. Um, Harriet, yeah, friend. Sometimes, sometimes you find that um, very good friends are related to the person you are related to. So, yeah, you might find that um, very good friends are or prominent person, or prom yes. or there were prominent persons in the community, let's say a shopkeeper or someone who, who I might observe as an informant as well. Yes. But sometimes you also find, um, especially where the, the mother is unmarried, that the father may serve as an informant. So he's, he's there listed on the record, but not necessarily as father. So it's always important to check out names that are listed as informants or witnesses on these, for these particular events. 
There's another question from Debbie on Facebook asking about persons adopted around 1914. But I personally don't have any information on, on that. Okay, and Nicholas doesn't as well. But that is one that we may ask a question about. Usually ad adoptions are quite um, confidential and so on. Uh, but oh, that's a question to see if there's any such records in existence. Uh, there's one for Yvette Jones. I've been trying to trace Rosella Carewood for a number of years. I think I have a death certificate, her children, but no birth certificate. Any ideas where to search next besides funeral records? So Josella, you have a birth certificate, but you do not have a birth record. It could be a case where her birth name was different to the name she was buried with. And you find that a lot. Uh, if I give an example, when my own family tree, my grandmother on my father's side is listed on my father's birth certificate as an archer. It's only after she died that persons realized you would know all the archer in existence, but her name was actually all the rest. So you have that that person did not go through the legal processes for changing names. So perhaps if you have, if you do the, you know the, the, the age at the time of death, you need to then make you check back the record. If you have any idea of the parish, check out the records to see if there are any possibilities. Are there um, also, if she had any siblings, if you can do any cross referencing. Is she going to add anything to that, Nicholas? Mm -hmm. Well, what I would mainly state is um, Harriet is correct that we find that, as I mentioned before, that persons in the baptism, they would have the surname of their mother, but in life they adopted the surname of their father. So, um, and, and we know that that mainly happens with children who were born out of wedlock. So that is a possibility where you are unable to find the information that you're looking for. You might have to check the um, for the child's surname under the, the mother as opposed to the father and also the person's adopted name. So therefore um, you find that, that um, person's, what would initially in the baptism record be their first name would become their middle name and they would adopt another name. So let's say, the person was born, let's say, John, in the baptism records is John Smith. Later on in life, he might be Harold John Archer. So that is a possibility why you are unable to find the name that you were looking for. Okay, so my was a postman. Um, so in a case of that, you need to check some of the, the list of was listed. Uh, in the civil list. So excuse, um, in terms of um, the person who posted Postman, I think that was in relation to um, the previous comment, as it, the, the, the previous question as it re relates to informant, that probably it was a Postman who was an informant. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a possibility. Possibility. But, well, that would be a respected person. True. I also have, have a degree of mobility. Yes. Because that is another um, variable. A person being, being able to get to the um, police station to, um, to register. Right. Yes. So. All right. Um, so one wants to know if you don't know the parish of birth, how to proceed. I guess this will make it a little more difficult. 
Yes, <laughs> there will be more, more information to go through. Unfortunately, I am not in a position to give Dr. Ali's email address at this time, but um, if there's a general interest in learning about persons who migrated to Brazil and so on, I may be able to speak with him about the possibility of having a presentation. So I can, I will do that. I think I've exhausted the, or oh, for the person who is interested in the article on the grant surname, that will come up in connections. And that if I do not have your email address, send me your email address. And my email address is library at barbnews.org.bb. I have, it's in the chat a couple of times. So if you need to have a copy of connections, send me your email address and I will send them out to you. I think that ends our question and comments. Sorry, one more? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yes. This person said, I've been searching for insights into the life of my great-great-grandmother, Helen Elizabeth Greenwich. She reportedly moved to Diana. One daughter was christened at St. Silas in St. James in the late 1890s. I presume she left in the early 1900s. She likely returned in the late 1960s and is reportedly buried at Westbury Cemetery. I have been unable to find any other records. Uh, I assume this person is asking how to go about um, finding additional records for her great-great-grandmother. Uh, but you, you always start at what you know, and you said that she, okay, you said reportedly buried at Westbury Cemetery. What you can do, I have Westbury Cemetery records, and you can also find those at, um, Caribbean family history, Caribbean family history org. So search that website, Caribbean family history org. If you do not find it, um, send me a, a note at library at barviews.org.bb and let me look at, at my list. And then from that, let's see if there's anything that can assist you. Are there any more? All right, it seems as though we have exhausted our questions and comments and we've been here quite a while. So I want to thank Nicholas for another very informative presentation. I want to remind persons that appended to his last presentation is a list of the websites that he re re previewed last time. And you will just to add to it this time, familysearch.org. And that is a tool you can put in your genealogy toolkit. So thank you, Nicholas, again, for an excellent presentation. I want to thank all of you out there on Facebook Live and on Zoom for joining us this afternoon. Remember that the, this presentation will join the other presentations on our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to go back to them time and time again. And if you have any additional questions or you need any information, we will try to help you in any way. So you can send me an email at library at barbmuse.org.bb. So I thank you again and have a wonderful evening. And we will see you back in this forum in September. Yes, in September. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you what will be and what we'll be having in the in the session then. But in September, we will welcome you to the session again. So have a good evening and be safe. Goodbye.